This video is all about setup time, hold time, propagation delay, timing errors, and metastability. So a few topics to discuss here, but they're all kind of related, and uh, so let's just jump right in. Uh, as a quick refresher, I'm gonna just talk about uh, what is a flip-flop real quick, um, because this is what it's all about. Like the flip-flop is the critical component under consideration here. And just to give you a reminder how it works, D is your input to your flip-flop, Q is your output of your flip-flop, and this little arrow greater than sign here is the clock input. So any data that appears on the D input gets clocked or registered or sent to the Q output on the rising edge of the clock. Sometimes it's the falling edge of the clock, but like 99% of the time it's the rising edge of the clock. So if you look here on clock rising edge one, D is low, Q goes low. Here between one and two, D goes high, um, but the flip-flop doesn't see that effect until rising edge number two, which happens here. And then once rising edge number two happens, Q goes high. These should be uh, like pretty much aligned at the same time. And then rising edge three, D is high, Q stays high. Okay, quick refresher. Now, the issues that we're going to talk about are basically what happens when D moves, like when this transition on D is really close to the rising edge of the clock. If you think about it, like the flip-flop needs to see it's a voltage, right, on the input of D. Um, and if that voltage is in the process of rising to another voltage or falling to a different voltage, is it is it a high? Is it a low? Is it somewhere between the two? Um, this is the, the topic of consideration here. And all these things contribute to timing errors inside your design. So the first thing that can contribute to that is setup and hold time. Setup and hold time are very simple, although I feel like they're explained in a very confusing way. Setup time is the amount of time required for stable data before the clock. So your data needs to be unchanging for setup time. Okay, so if the, yeah, that, that's what it is. Hold time is the time required for the data to stay stable after the clock. Setup time before the clock, hold time after the clock. If your data changes in that setup time or that hold time, then you can potentially have a timing error and timing violation. It's not good, you're violating setup and hold time. That's a bad thing, don't do that. Propagation delay. Propagation delay, setup and hold time is just one flip-flop. Propagation delay talks about what happens when you have a source flip-flop and a destination flip-flop. So. It does take time for voltages to travel down wires. The rule of thumb, and I, I think this is pretty close, but just to give you an idea of how long it takes like electricity to travel on a wire, it's around one nanosecond per foot. So if you have a foot of wire and you put a pulse of voltage across that, that wire, it'll take about a nanosecond to go to the other side. Um, it might not be exactly a nanosecond, but that's about how long it takes. So if you imagine, if you just had like a, several feet of wire inside your FPGA, which you have a lot of routing resources, you might actually have something like that. If you have several feet of wire inside your FPGA, that'll actually take some time to propagate a signal. Um, so if you have a flip-flop in one corner and a flip-flop in the other corner, you have to travel that distance physically inside your FPGA, and that's, um, that's part of what adds up the propagation delay. Additionally, like if you're doing some work inside of, you know, between two flip-flops. Let's say you, you do it, have an AND gate here or a series of gates um, in between these two flip-flops, that's gonna add time as well because each one of those uh, LUTs, that's basically going through a lookup table, each one of those lookup tables is gonna add a little bit of delay to your signal. So propagation delay is concerned with uh, the time it takes for the signal to travel from your source to your destination. And the shorter these things, you know, the closer these flip-flops are to each other, um, the shorter your propagation delay, and also the less stuff you're doing between the two flip-flops, the shorter your propagation time. And uh, the, the, way that, the reason why this is important is because if you have a long propagation delay, that means that you can't run your clock very quickly, well, as quickly as maybe you want to. Um, if you have one flip-flop on one side of the FPGA and the other flip-flop on the other side of the FPGA and you're trying to run a 400 megahertz clock, you're gonna get timing errors and your, your tool will tell you, like, I can't, I can't do that. So it'll actually place and route, what, what place and route is doing when you're running your place and route um, part of your build process is it's putting flip-flops, you know, maybe it's like choosing these two that are close together if it's got timing problems, it'll be like, okay, I can't put, you know, flip-flop one and flip-flop two too far away, I got a, there's a timing error there, so I'm gonna move them physically closer together, and maybe that'll help the propagation delay. So, propagation delay is concerned with two flip-flops. Set up and hold time, one flip-flop. Next, 
timing errors. I've talked about timing errors, but it's basically you tell the tool, the place and route tool, your clock frequency, I'm running at 50 megahertz, 200 megahertz, whatever it is. And if you get any setup and hold times uh, that are violated, then a timing error will pop up on the tool and you should never ignore it. You should fix it. If you have any timing errors, you should pay very close attention to them because it's the tool telling you, hey dummy, this isn't gonna work very well. Um, you really want zero timing errors for a good design. How to fix timing errors is probably beyond the scope of this particular video. I will give you one little bit of tip, uh, which is, you know, your, your clock, your clock period is, there's a lot of ways to fix timing errors, but um, quickly, your clock period is dictated by your setup time, plus your hold time, plus your propagation delay. Setup time, hold time, propagation delay, those three things. The setup time and the hold time are basically dictated by your FPGA. And you think about it, that's the amount of time that each individual flip-flop requires stability on the in, uh, setup time before the, before the clock edge, hold time after the clock edge. That's how long the data needs to be stable. You have no control over those parameters. Those are fundamentally built into your, your type of FPGA fabric that you're using. Your, your flip-flop, your, uh, you know, if it's a Xilinx and Vertex 7, whatever it is, the setup and hold time are, are just set in stone. You do have control over propagation delay. So, um, specifically if you have, motorcycle, specifically if you have too much logic between two flip-flops, um, that's gonna cause high propagation delay. I mentioned if you have a bunch of gates, the, each one of those gates is a lookup table, each one of those lookup tables adds delay. So if you have a long if-else chain, for example, inside of your um, inside of your VHDL code or Verilog code, and you know, if this, else if this, else if this, else if this, that's like a, that's a, that's a very uh, likely spot where you're gonna create a large amount of propagation delay. And that is something that you can fix. The way you can fix it, there's two ways to fix it. So maybe that, let's say that causes a timing error. You're trying to run this if else chain at 200 megahertz. If this, else if this, else if this, else if this, and it's like, hey, go run that at 200 megahertz, and the tool says, no way, I can't do it. You can fix it in two ways. You can slow down your main clock, which you probably can't actually slow down your main clock because your clock is usually fixed. Your clock is usually, you know, your heartbeat, your drum that keeps everything chugging along. And it's not often that you can just be like, oh, I'll just run things at half the clock speed that I thought I could. Um, sometimes you can, sometimes you can get away with that, but in general, you can't. Um, so the most of the time, if you have propagation delay causing timing errors, you can break up your logic into stages, which is called pipelining. You can pipeline your logic. So if you have a pipeline, it's basically you know, taking something that's a large amount of logic and breaking it up into two small amounts of logic or three small amounts of logic, whatever it is, until you meet timing errors. And this does inherently introduce a single clock cycle delay for every flip-flop you add, but that's probably okay. Uh, because if you think about it, the data going in, if you send one new piece of data going into the pipeline, one new piece of data comes out on, uh, on every single clock edge. So it does delay your data by one clock cycle, but it doesn't mean you can process half the data. You can still process all of the data. You don't lose any ability to process data by pipelining. So. Uh, pipelining is extremely common uh, because you just can't do everything in one clock cycle. It's impossible. You got to break stuff up. The faster you go, the more pipelining is required. The faster that you go, meaning the faster the clock rate. Next, metastability. Metastability is bad. It is not good. And uh, officially, I'm going to read here so I don't state incorrectly. A metastability is a state of unbounded time during which it is unknown what state will be adopted by the system eventually. So I wanted to be precise with the, the wording here because this is often a point of confusion. But the flip-flop, uh, if you have a metastable condition, the flip-flop might is undefined, might oscillate, it might be a zero, then a one, might be a one, then a zero. Um, you just don't really know what's gonna happen. And this is caused by setup and hold time violations, um, meaning your data changes, your data and your clock happen like really close together. But not every time. Um, and actually in the real world, it's pretty rare for this metastable condition to happen. But when it does happen, it's not great. Uh, so I did do another video 
uh, on crossing clock domains, and I talk a little bit more about how to cross clock domains, which is a likely candidate for a metastable condition, and how to, how to fix that. So check that out if you want to know how to fix a metastable condition. Um, the key is putting two flip-flops back to back. That's usually a great way to fix metastable conditions. Um, however, uh, even with even without metastability, uh, setup and hold time violations are a problem because the flip-flop might not capture the correct data at the right time. So even if you have a timing error um, and it's not a metastable condition, you might ex be expecting your pipeline to be working correctly, but it might miss a, a bit and throws off your data. So you know, again, Timing errors are a big deal. You should pay attention to them. Don't ignore them. And when you're crossing clock domains, metastability happens all the time. Use FIFOs when crossing clock domains. Use double double flip-flops to re remove or help eliminate metastable conditions. And again, I talk more in detail about that in the crossing clock domains video. So I hope that summarizes everything from setup and hold time, propagation delay, timing errors, and metastability. Thanks very much for watching.